Hi everyone. Today I'd like to talk to you about how a vernier scale works. Now vernier scales are used all over the place. They're used on your micrometers to get down to one ten thousandth of an inch. They're used on vernier calipers and they're used on height gauges a lot. The scales themselves have been around since the Renaissance and the way they work is in the same spacing from end to end you have one number of lines on one side, in this case it's 10 on this piece, and you have one more number on the vernier scale, in this case we've got 11. So you can see right here I've, I've written in some numbers, some graduations here. So here I've got uh, 0, 10, 20, 30, so on and so forth, and then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 0 again. What this is going to allow us to do is have a readable number of graduations on what would be the main scale of the instrument. Otherwise, if you had a caliper that read to thousandths of an inch, it would actually have to have 1,000 divisions on it in order to read it directly. And that's just not feasible. You wouldn't be able to see anything. What happens is as you slide the vernier scale across, we can see, okay, well, that one lines up like that. You can see the line on either side does not line up, so it's pretty obvious on this, of course, because it's big. And likewise, when you go to two or three, so if these were thousandths of an inch, here we would have three thousandths of an inch, and there's our zero. So um, likewise, if we got all the way up to here where zero was lined up with the ten, then we're at ten thousandths of an inch. So then let's say we were right there, well our 5 lines up, our 4 and our 6 don't, so we're actually at 15 thousandths of an inch. And this goes on and on, I mean there's 20, there's your 30. It allows you to take a reading on something that is relatively small with something that is still visible to you. So here I've got a vernier caliper. Uh, it's got an inch scale and a metric scale. We'll pay attention to the inches for this video. Um, each mark on this main scale is 25 thousandths of an inch and then you have 25 graduations on the vernier scale. So the way that works is you're paying attention to where the zero is on the vernier scale. So let's say I was up this way. Well you can see I'm past the 125 thousandths mark and then you would have to find which one of these marks lines up with the line on the main scale. Now these are a little hard to see on camera, but if you were seeing this in person, the ten thousandths graduation on the vernier scale over here is uh, is the one that's lined up, which means that we've got 135 thousandths of an inch showing on the caliper. And again, just like on my demo where it's very easy to see, you're looking at the graduations on either side of the one that's lined up as well to see if they are or are not lined up. One should be offset one way, the other should be offset the other. So that's the telltale sign of which one is the correct graduation on the vernier scale. You can actually see on this pair of vernier calipers that it doesn't actually have to be just one more graduation than what was on the main scale because our 25 thousandths vernier scale is actually spread out over 50 marks on the main scale four marks for each hundred thousandth, so we go all the way up to there. Of course, you're counting the zero line as well, so that's 50 marks. So you have 26 marks on the same spacing as 50 marks on the main scale. Remember, we're counting zero as a mark as well. Some of you may be asking, well, why do we even use vernier calipers anymore or vernier height gauges when dial ones and digital ones exist? In my mind, the vernier caliper actually has quite a few advantages over their dial and digital counterparts. For one thing, uh, if you drop this, it's still going to read zero at the zero line unless you ding up the jaws. Uh, whereas if you drop a dial caliper and maybe even a digital caliper, things inside can go spraying all over the place and, um, and it may not actually read zero where it's supposed to anymore. Um, the other thing is, this is a 12-inch caliper. Probably can't see all that. Um, now, 12-inch dial calipers and digital calipers aren't horribly expensive, but if you get up into the 24-inch or 36-inch or 48-inch range, um, the sticker shock on a dial caliper of that size is going to be uh, quite considerable, and even more so with a digital caliper. Another big advantage over digital calipers is that this doesn't need a battery and it doesn't have sensitive electronics that might oxidize over time. 
in a hundred years this is still going to be a usable measuring tool. You probably can't say the same for your digital calipers.